What's up, everybody? This is Jamel E. Hills. I just wanted to come to you with a word that I believe that God has put on my heart. And I just wanted to share this with you based off of observation. I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's pretty disturbing. I'm hearing a lot of issues that people are having that disturbs my spirit. And my heart goes out to them and even to myself because I am no exempt from anybody else. I could be tempted. God can, God's judgment can fall on me just like anybody else. So I, I just wanted to come to you from this thought. I'm just going to tell you the thought first and then I'll elaborate on some things and then we'll get right into it. So the thought of this is lower the risk of sexual sin. And the first place that a lot of people head go when I say lower the risk of sexual sin is a lot of people first think about single people, but we never point the attention on people that are in marriage. You know, uh, uh, sexual temptation and sexual sin does exist in marriages, as we all see, which is why the divorce rate goes up from from infidelity and cheating all the time. And it's and it's, it's steadily rising because I truly believe that the enemy himself is tried to make marriage extent in these last days. He He hates marriage. He hates unity because marriage, in essence, is God's original plan. It's God's original plan. And, and, and his purpose for our lives, reproduction. You know, God calls and chooses who he wants to get married and when he wants them to get married. But the enemy wants to kill that unity. He wants to kill the likeness of God because that's what marriage really is. Um, and in no way, I just want to, you know, cut the enemy head off right here. In no way, shape or form am I coming before you guys as a marital expert or a counselor in any way, shape or form. This is based off of spiritual observation, observation of my own heart. Uh, uh, the enemy fights everyone. He fights me. He fights my friends. He fights all of us in different ways, shapes and forms. And I do believe that in those fights and in those temptations, you do learn things. You're supposed to anyway. Um, I can recall just in my previous job, before I recovered from COVID-19, before I contracted it, I was transporting patients that were twice my age, twice your age, twice your parents' age. I'm talking about people that were in their late 90s, close to 100. <clears throat> and God has used a lot of people to pour a lot of marital advice to me. And I, and I, and I just truly believe that the chief of all knowledge and wisdom is the Holy Spirit. And I do believe that the Holy Spirit can talk to someone that hasn't been married for a long time. Better yet, I believe that the Holy Spirit can talk to someone that that has never been married. And I like to use the reference of Paul, the one of the chief apostles in the New Testament that God called and chosen by his own hand. This man was never married, but a lot of us married couples follow what was spoken through his mouth from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> inspiration of the Holy Spirit that was given to him concerning marriage. And this man has never even been married a day in his life. So I just wanted to talk to you guys from the heart. I don't want you to take me the wrong way. Uh, uh, this is not really for children to be listening to. So for children, as if, if a child is in the room, you might want to move them away from the camera. But I want to come to you raw, real, and uncut because a lot of the time, this is what we need. We're not talking about it. It's being neglected. And that's why the enemy is building a home bigger and bigger in these areas because it's not being exposed. But I want to be the vessel today that God uses to expose this demonic spirit that is being used on an all-time high in our marriages. As I stated in the beginning, the enemy hates marriage. The devil hates marriage. If it was up to him, he would want it extinct. Marriage produces God's plan. Marriage is, is God's uh, uh, first intentional purpose for our lives. And we'll get all into why and all that in another video. But I just want to focus in on the married couples just for now. We'll get to the single people. But I want to focus in on the married couples. We have to be... Excuse me, I have a lot of mucus in me. We, we, we have to be extremely careful what we put before our eyes, what we put before our ears, the conversations that we're in, what we're looking at on Facebook, what we're looking at on YouTube, what we're looking at on the internet, on Google, what pictures you're looking at. You got to be extremely careful of what you're doing because the enemy is trying to destroy our men and women of God. And I'm not just talking about men and women of God that preach, but I'm talking about men and women of God, 
period. He hates you. The moment he hates you regardless, but he his his hatred intensifies towards the God that you serve. And the more that God gets in you, the more the enemy begins to hate you. Every time he looks at you, he sees the likeness in the image of God. And in marriage, that is something that we reflect the image and the likeness of God. So I want to come to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, a simple scripture. These words are extremely small, so bear with me, please. I'm going to read the scripture first, and this is a study Bible. And at the bottom, I'm going to read the reference down here at the bottom that goes, it pretty much paraphrases uh, uh, um, chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. All right, here we go. So let's start chapter seven. We're going to go to verse five. It says, do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. And then the reference that reference from three and five, from three through five, it says sexual temptations are difficult to withstand because they appeal to the normal and natural desires that God has given us. Marriage provides God's way to satisfy these natural sexual desires and, and to strengthen the partners against temptation. Married couples have the responsibility to care for each other. Therefore, husbands and wives should not withhold themselves sexually from one another, but should fulfill each other's needs and desires. This is so important because the enemy, and this is both sides. I'm not being biased here. This is both sides. The enemy will use abstinence in a marriage to cause your husband to cheat on you, to influence that, to cause your wife to do the same thing to you. So we have to tread very lightly and very carefully on what we're about to talk about because you are going to get critics that disagree. Now, I'm going to try my best to cover all spots before we move on. Now, there is never, listen to what I'm saying, brothers. Listen to what I'm saying, brothers. There is never an excuse for you to cheat on your wife. Never. This is what you have a God for. And this is what you have the Holy Spirit for. See, this is the advantage that you have over the world is that you have a leader, you have a guide, you have a counselor, you have an open throne room 24-7 the moment you come to Christ. That's open for you. You get right through the God, right through to God from Jesus Christ. So there is never an excuse for you to take this scripture and to violate the laws of God and use his scripture and try to manipulate it. So let's get that clear because we'll have a lot of brothers that will try to use this scripture. Well, she wasn't giving me none, so I had to go get it elsewhere. No, it says in marriage, for better or for worse. So you have to understand that there will be times that you're not always permitted to act out your desires and needs. This is where the Holy Spirit comes, comes in at. This is where your relationship with God comes in at. Understand what I'm saying with, to, to you. Because if you notice at the bottom, at the very end, it says, so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Because, see, a, a lot of us, we have no self-control in that area. Never, ever tried to. A lot of us never had that. Let me give you something that's very personal and private. Have I sinned? Yes. Have I been in sexual activity before I got married? Yes. But I saved myself in its totality until I got married. So it can be done. And in through... Through doing this, do, through doing this, through these practices, see, God has everything under control. God knows why he do what he do when he do it. Through those practices, it has helped me to be faithful 
in unpleasant times. It has helped me to stay faithful to my wife in times that the scenario wasn't always presentable and vice versa with her. She did the same thing. She practiced the same thing. This is why. However, now I'm not coming down hard on those that didn't wait. Everybody got different circumstances, situations. Some of you didn't even have uh, uh, a choice on whether you were going to save yourselves because we have that violating spirit that comes in and take it from you. So I'm not talking about you guys because you can still practice self-control even in the marriage through mutual discussion. Or you know, the Holy Spirit can help you, but I'm just I'm I'm just showing you that a, a lot a lot of us because of our lack of self control, it's understandable as into why you shouldn't hold yourself in marriage. When when you get married, it is your duty now to take care of each other, and we're not just talking about sex because a lot of times when we talk about intimacy, that's the first place I might go to. But we have to find out what our partner want in need from each other. We have to talk these things out through mutual discussion, through mutual understanding. If you're not talking and you're always avoiding conversation, you can't get mad because you don't know what actually does pleases the heart of your husband or pleases the heart of your wife. Intimacy is not just sex. A lot of us, if you've ever read the five love languages, a lot of us, our love tank is low. Our love tank is very low. So when your love tank is extremely low, you're open for attacks to, of the enemy. You're wide open because wherever is something is not being fulfilled, the enemy going to try to counterfeit fill that area. And the reason why I say counterfeit fill is, 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 is because there's never a fulfillment in it. That's why you keep going back to it. That's why you're still addicted to pornography. That's why you're still addicted to sex. That's why you're still addicted to food. That's why you're still... We all are have our addictions and our issues and problems because we're, number one, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to fulfill all areas. We're not allowing Him to be Lord over everything in every part and every aspect of our lives. So then when you do that, you leave yourself wide open. Why did the Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. God telling you, give all of you to him. Because when you give all of you to him, now you're wide open for God to control, for God to, to, to influence, for God to strengthen you. But if we don't give ourselves away to him, and a lot of us do it backwards, we give ourselves to these men and women and then not him, and then get mad when we're not fulfilled. See, I, I can go left, right, up, down with this. This, this can be a three-hour sermon if, if, if I took the time to do that. But I wanted to get into this because I just wanted to say, brothers and sisters, the enemy is going to use arguments to create, abstinent, to create abstinence on purpose. The enemy will use false ideology of each other on purpose so that you don't want to touch each other, so that you won't want to hug each other, don't want to kiss each other. If your man or woman likes to hold hands, hold hands. Sacrifice sometimes. You don't like holding hands. So what? Do it for her. Do it for him. I don't always like, you know, it, we have to work together. We got to work together. That's the only way that any relationship can work. It's between two people. Two people have to make the mutual decision to love one another and to accommodate for one another, be understanding to one another. So, you know, I, I didn't want to make this long, but I just wanted to just throw it out there. Don't withhold yourselves from your husband and wife. And I don't just mean sexually. I mean, in all aspects, stop doing that. That's dangerous ground. That's dangerous grounds for the enemy to take that and to work with that. That's dangerous grounds to open up addictions for people. That's dangerous grounds to open up judgment for people. They, people walk right into, they walk right into God's judgment. And it, it, it's, it's seriously, seriously dangerous, saints. This is not something to take lightly. You know, we have, you know, I got on the brothers, but now I got to get, you can't keep withholding yourself for your own selfish issues. And so, and, and cause you got soul ties in your past that you don't want to let go. And, and you got issues going on with you. You got to get before the throne of God. No, you don't force yourself. You don't let nobody force you into nothing, married or unmarried. You don't let nobody force you into nothing, but it's your job and duty to go to the Holy Spirit and say, father, give me a desire for my husband. Give me a desire for my wife. Because as I've heard many married people say, 
I mean, I've been in relationships each time that lasted five, like five years, six years. So I, I got a little shump shump, you know, you say 30 years, I'll be 30 years old um, this October. And, and a lot of people, I'll be like, well, if 30 years is not a long time, I volunteer you to do 30 years in jail. If it's not no time, of course, there's always someone more wise. There's always someone I can learn from, but I'm just giving to you what's what's on my heart. And it's, it's very uh, imperative that ladies don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You, you, you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, uh, the, the, the doors that you're opening for your man to be attacked is lethal, especially men that are in ministry. You know, you want to make it your business to love that man, cherish that man, honor that man, uh, 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 um, fulfill what God tells you to fulfill. Get answers from the Holy Spirit. A lot of the time, that man don't even know himself. The Holy Spirit knows the man more than the man knows the man. Go to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. He's the counselor. He's the guy. Um, what is it that I can do just to make my wife smile today? Well, what is it I can do just to make my husband feel loved? You know, when you take those steps to do that, you're showing God that you want to please him. Because in essence, this is God's will in marriage. This is not all his will, but this is part of it. Husbands, same thing, man. Ask God to teach you how to love her. Teach you, teach you certain things, man. You ain't gonna know every everything. You know, the world attaches their 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 pride and ego. You jumping into relationships. Oh, I know women. I know this. No, you don't. You don't know all women because all women are different. All women have similarities, but in essence, all women are different. And you got to the Holy Spirit is who made this person. The word of God made that person that he, he didn't just make the temple, but he also made the spirit man of that person. So you're going to need guidance. Seek counseling if, 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 if you need it. If you need if it's that bad, seek godly counseling. You know, it, it's all the way the Holy Spirit leads you. He may lead you to books, to read books. He may lead you to just talk to each other. He may just illuminate you. It's all what God says. It's all where he leads you. So I just want to say, and husbands, take care of yourselves. Eat healthy. Do right by your body. There comes a time when a woman gets a certain age in the later years where things are happening and you know what I'm talking about. And if you sick and you can't fulfill, then you leave the door open for her. That's what I'm saying. It goes on and on and on. Take care of yourselves. Love your bodies. Cherish those temples of the Holy Ghost and do what God is calling us and telling us to do. If you love each other, you're not going to leave the door open. Brothers, don't make it hard for the women to love you. Don't make it hard for them to want to be intimate with you. Don't make it hard. And, and what I say, you know what I'm saying. Don't, don't, don't be jack butts, man. Don't be jack butts being idiots all day long and then think that later on and that night it's going to, just like Dr. Miles Monroe said, intimacy is an all day thing. It leads up to that. You get what I'm saying? It's not something you could just... It's, it's two different sex and intimacy is, is two different things, but it but but sex can be a part of intimacy. So I don't want to get too deep in all of that. I'm just here in essence saying love each other, love each other in a way where we don't leave ourselves open to the enemy. If you love your wife, you'll do right by her and you'll do right by what God says. If you love your husband, you'll do right by him. You'll do what God tells you to do. And if you love God more than all, you do what God is telling you to do. We'll do what the scripture says. And like I said, don't force it. Do not force it. That is the worst thing you can do. You don't force nothing. If it's that bad, like I said, you might want to go seek counseling or you might want to go read some books. Get into prayer, first of all, before you make any move. And the Holy Spirit will lead you on what's next, but do not force it. That's something you don't want to do. Work toward it, but don't force it. Ask the Holy Spirit to spark the love, to keep the love flowing. A lot of you think that you've fallen out of love. You didn't fall out of love. The enemy is just attacking your union. He wants you apart. He does not want God's plan to be fulfilled because every plan fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven destroys the kingdom of darkness. I'm going to say it again. Every plan that is fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven, is, it, it, it destroys something in the kingdom of darkness. So I don't want to make this any longer than 20 minutes. If I left anything out, I'll come back. We'll probably touch on the single people next because we, we touched on the married people. This video can go longer. I have more to say, but like I said, the longer you talk, sometimes you lose people's you lose people's attention like that. And I I, I don't want to be that guy that talk too much. 
So God love you. God bless you. My prayer is that God's will will be done in your lives. Amen.